What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Fantastic Duo Show. I'm here, flanked by my co-host, my boy, my man, Steve Cardenas. What's up, Steve? What's up, Twitch? How's everybody doing out there? Thank you guys for joining us for another fantastic episode of the Fantastic Duo Show. Uh, as uh, Alex said, I'm Steve Cardenas, uh, Rocky the Red Ranger, and um, I think today is going to be a pretty good episode. I'm pretty excited about what we got going. So, uh... This is think about this, Alex, like you like grew up on the show. You watch the show. You're a huge fan of it. We always do the into the morphin grid on Friday nights as well, too, where you do like a basically like a, a playback where you watch old episodes and you talk with the fans and stuff about it. So when you first met, you know, say like, you know, Rita, when she came out of the the the, the trash can in the moon <laughs> or whatever it was, like what 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 was what were some of the thoughts that you had about like uh you know the at, whole, the whole at, thing, the power at, thing. At that moment, man, when that when that scene first hit, I was like, I am hooked. I need to know more. I need to know what's happening. Who is this? Why are they here? <laughs> like, I was a kid, man. So to me, I'm just like, this is just huge for me. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, we're excited. So I think we'll get into it right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in ten thousand years, we have three amazing people here. First of all, we've got uh, Zordon, uh, Mr. David Fielding. Let's bring him on. Yes, hello. We've got uh, Mr. Kerrigan Mayhem, and uh, the voice of Goldar, and of course, the lovely Barbara Goodson, uh, the voice of Rita Repulsa. Yay! Yay! So, hello, welcome, welcome, everybody. Hey! hey. hey. Good to be here, man. <laughs> Good to be good to see you guys. Thank nice you all again you. for coming on the show and joining us. Uh, we're gonna have. Uh, I think there's already a lot of chatter going on in the uh, in the yeah. chat room already. So people seem very excited to have you guys. This is a great dynamic, I think. Right, right, Alex. So, uh, you know, we got Zordon, we got Rita, we got Goldar. We can talk about their rivals. We can, you know, let the fans ask a bunch of questions as well too. So, this... how's everybody doing in California? You guys are all in Cali, right? Or actually, David, you're in Texas. I'm in Texas. Yes. I'm in Texas. Me too. Me too. Well, I'm uh, I'm pretty hot in Santa Monica. Ooh, I, I love. Yeah, I know. I I I do miss California though. The weather's pretty tough to beat because even though it is hot, it's like a dry heat. You don't feel it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm Central Coast and it's foggy and beautiful and about 66 right now. Oh, so oh that's I'm oh, wow. I'm comfortable. I would love to that. Meanwhile, I'm like sweating in, here in in Dallas. It's still so hot. It was like 95 degrees today or something. Mm -mm. It was like just like the sun was just leaning on me, you know. So, wow. <laughs> man, by the way, guys, you guys are getting so much love in the chat room right now. This is this is being this is being uh uh uh, dub the legendary podcast now with all you legends on here from the <laughs> it's from the so beginning cool, of the show yeah. yeah so they're very they're extremely happy to have you guys here um barbara they're saying how they loved your your voice work in digimon uh lady and the tramp Aww. 2 power Rangers. So there's a lot going on i'll be relaying it See? to you guys a little bit this by a little bit a, this is amazing they're, yeah. they're, they're going over your whole imdb over here that's yeah, awesome yeah yeah <laughs> so this is really cool to have uh here and and of course you know we'll um once in a while i'll, I'll stop and i'll bring in questions that are coming in from from the uh, from the sh from the chat there for you guys right. to answer. So I'm I'm excited to have you here. Uh, I don't know if Steve, you want to start to kick off the questions well, or sure, the, the yeah. stories I mean, I, I, since I mean, you work I would with like them. To know. Yeah, I mean, I would like to know because what a lot of people probably don't know is that you know we never were like too much together. You know what I mean? Like when we were on the show, um, because we, they would always at one at a time stick us in this little fishbowl, and then we would stand in front of a microphone and we would listen for the beeps and then we'd shout out our thing and then we would go and then the next person would come in so if we ever like saw each other or interacted back then it was mainly as we were passing each other in the booth you know what i mean yeah so we we, 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 were, we were passing ships. We were passing yeah. Ships. Yeah. Yeah. strangers yeah. in the night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were like ten, two years old or something, weren't you? Oh. Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so crazy, though. Um, yeah. I remember, like, from for, for auditioning, like, there were, when we, we were holding auditions, they wouldn't even see anybody unless they were at least 18. Um, and I was 20 at that time, um, but I was playing a 16 year old. So, yeah, that's what we're. So anyway, but uh, what like I guess my, what I was gonna say is like 
how how did all of this unfold for you guys? Like, I mean, how did you guys get hooked up with like Scott Page and 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 Tony Oliver and stuff? Had you done a lot of work with these guys before, or and then they brought you on, or were these things that you kind of like just auditioned for? Or how did it all work out? Should, Maybe should we, we start sh- with Barbara. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna say the same thing. Can yeah, we right. start so with Rita? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's start with Rita, then we'll go well, to Goldar, we'll go to Zordon, and then we'll like we'll okay. we'll we'll keep passing it around. Well, Kerrigan and I certainly have similar stories. We were voice actors always and mm-hmm. actors first and then voice actors to make. So we didn't have to wait tables. We did anime because it had just come in. Right. And we were making the rounds as a kind of a VO group, a troupe. Mm-hmm. And we heard about this company called Saban. Hey, there's they're doing more cartoons and stuff over there. So we took ourselves over there and auditioned. And mostly what I started with was little boy voices. And uh, I became somebody they used a lot. I did uh, uh, Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Right. Um, And then from there, I just got Rita as a, hey, Barbara, they need a witch voice. Do do (laughs) Rita. And, you know, and then there's that story of how I got fired and then rehired. that's a long story. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great story. It's a great story. We would love to hear that. I never story. knew about this. Oh, it's a beauty. You. It's a beauty. It's classic Hollywood, which she's going to share with you right now. <laughs> goes all the way to the A-listers. This is an exclusive Hollywood bullshit. I love Fire it. I love wow. it. I already love Fire this. Fire away, Barbara. This we got to Now we got to know. Kerrigan's oh. built it up. Yeah. <laughs> I was directed by them to do like the Wicked Witch of the West, you know. I'll oh. get you, my pretty. So uh-huh. make my monster grow. It sounds like Finster, basically. Or Right. So I did that, and uh, they did a, a market research thing where they said, oh, we don't like that voice. It's not scary or anything, you know. They heard that voice forever. So they fired me. Oh. And oh. I said, oh, wait a minute. You directed me to do that voice. I right. Said, let me give you a scarier voice. And they said, no, we're going to have auditions. We need to have auditions. So I was like steaming already. I said, well, may I have the privilege of auditioning? Wow. He, yeah, 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 you can audition. Well, I said, all right. Mm. And when I got into the booth, I went, you want it scarier? <laughs> I want it scarier. And I booked it. I love wow. it. Wow. <laughs> I love, I can't believe that, you know, it's like, because you're right, they did direct us, you know what I mean? Like, if we weren't saying something right, they would say, hey, we want it more like this. And I can't believe that they would let you go through that whole entire thing and then tell you that they didn't. That's they didn't so Steve, <laughs> I went in voice caster once a jillion years ago and, you know, everybody's sitting around. The voice caster was a, is, it still exists, right, Barbara? I just did a radio spot, yeah. So the voice caster has been around forever. And what it is, is an outside casting firm. If you didn't go into your agents to read the copy, you'd go over to some of the other outside casting and they'd call the agent. And the agent called you and say voice caster wants to see you at three o'clock. I go in at three o'clock. You know, there's anywhere from five to eight, ten people sitting around reading copy, be it one piece or two or ten. Mm-hmm. Go down my, the road of the six or seven pieces of copy on the wall. And I am there to read for whatever. And I look at the one next to the one I'm taking, and it says, uh, "I see the what they're calling for, what it is." And I and I had a tendency to glance at what else is what what else are they reading for that I'm not that I that I'm not that I'm not going to read for that maybe I should be. Right. So piece of copy, and the son of a bitch direction down at the bottom says, "Looking for a Kerrigan Mayhan type." <laughs> <laughs> it's not the one I'm fucking reading for. <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. So I, I mean, said, yeah, cool. wow. they called me in to read my copy. And I said to one of the gals whose name escapes me, I said, what's with the, uh, the other copy there? What do you mean? The one that they said they want a, my type. <laughs> oh, yeah, they want, they want your type. They just don't want you. <laughs> oh my god i was like well, 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 i'm available yeah but they just want your you know that thing you do but they don't really <laughs> want you now how, where do you go with that 
Yeah, you I know? mean, what can you do? I mean, yeah. it's it's like in some in some I don't know, like you almost want to be flattered, but you're super offended at the same time. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's, uh, yeah. that's Kerrigan's total, Charlie Chaplin. Total back, story, right? It's total back and a compliment, right? I mean, you just had to, I had to laugh. I mean, you know, I did a show years ago called Team Night Rider, and oh, yeah. um, you know, I went in and I did the audition. I was with Don Pitts at the time, and. And and it and it and it and it was over and done with. And boom, we knocked it out. He said, "That's great. That's great. Beautiful. Goodbye." You know, when you do these auditions, you guys know this. Everyone here knows this. You walk away. You don't go. Yeah. You know, when you're really in the beginning of this shit, you go, yeah, "How'd I do? How'd I do? Did I get it?" Right. You know, it doesn't take long before you're like, "Done. Bye bye. Next." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I get a call about 10 days later, and I really killed it. I mean, I was real happy with the read and what I did with this character. Right. Uh, and it was, it, was a, it was a talking truck. They did a variation on Knight Rider called Team Knight Rider. You know, it lasted a fucking season. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they say, uh, I might, and, and Don, my agent, says, Hey, uh, yeah, I want you to come in and, uh, I want you to come in and read for that uh, fucking Team Knight Rider. I said, Don, Jesus Christ, you're not even that old yet. We did that already. I read for it 10 days ago. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't like anybody. I want you to come in and read for it again. I said, what? What? Do you want me to do it different? No, no. Do exactly what you fucking did. I said, well, but they listened to everything and they didn't like any of it. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know what the fuck they want. I did that same thing fucking thing and i landed the part wow I mean, it's, it's like you know i mean this is how great it is for the fans out there and the people listening i love you guys but man if you have any inclination to get into this shit run <laughs> don't walk the other way <laughs> that's a sound advice there sound advice <laughs> crush goldar leave it to goldar to crush everybody's dreams ladies yeah, and gentlemen yeah. for sure Amen, <laughs> I'm well, let's see. <laughs> well, let's see if we can go to a more positive note. Maybe if Zordon had a po more positive uh, effect. Uh, so, yeah. He so, um, will. yeah. He probably will. Now, yeah. now, correct me about this, but I think th there wasn't there wasn't there two Zordons or something. I can't I can't right. remember uh, exactly. Uh, like, refresh my memory. Yeah, I mean, I w I'm the real upstart of the group because Barbara and Kerrigan had been, uh, you know. They've been hitting the bricks and, and going to auditions for years. And here I am, I show up in Hollywood. I've been in Hollywood for two months and I get, I get cast as this part. Uh, See, it can happen, it can happen. It, that, hey, that's how it happened for me. I, my audition process lasted four days. <laughs> right. So, I mean, my audition was, was really simple. I mean, it, uh, because they had been filming the pilot, uh, they had called me in like the last week because they needed to cast this part. And uh, I thought it was going to be like a normal cattle call audition where there would be like a thousand other people. And then I would read lines, go home and never hear anything. Right. Uh, but when I got down there, it was just me and another gentleman. And uh, he went in first and uh, did his thing. And then I went in and did mine and basically used the voice that uh, you hear in the show. Right. And, um, that was it. I got I got cast. And uh, then I would. Uh, then I found out they, they were never going to film me ever again. And I was like, oh, sweet, awesome. Uh, so uh, I would just go into the, uh, uh, I would just go into the booth. Uh, we're looking for a I, David Fielding type. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say, I mean, uh, Kerrigan's story is just like Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin entered a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest and he got came third in th place. He <laughs> came <laughs> in third. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great experience, great learning experience. And, uh, yeah, well, what an introduction, man. You know, like I mean, that's that's awesome, man. I mean, you, you, I mean, no, none of us sitting here thought that show would take off the way that it did. You know, so that uh, was pretty... not from the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we would go into the booth and we would see the footage of that episode and what the monster was, I was like, you can't be serious, right? This is. A giant wow. purse? You want us to fight a giant purse? Okay, we'll fight. <laughs> there was some odd monsters, that's for sure. Um, so, like, so Rita, like, uh, sorry, Rita, sorry, Barbara, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> what a bonehead. Um, like, how about when the, with the with the trying to match the mouth? Was that like, uh, was uh -oh. that a difficult part too? I could that imagine was, it probably was. 
Well, there was so little footage of Machiko Soga. They yeah. just had like maybe eight episodes of her. And so whatever the first season was, maybe it was 13, they would use the same footage over and over again, but different storylines. Different lines. storylines. So there was no way there would be a, a, a possibility of matching that mouse. Right. Uh, because you'd find the right thing, but that didn't move the story along. Right. That's why I, you know, then they ended me with, uh, well, we don't have any more footage, so that's it on you, Rita. Wow. And I, re I remember writing to them, uh, uh, out of work Empress seeks employment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you knew that they were going to have to eventually try to recreate that character because there was just, you know... Well, um, the funny thing is that, that Robert came in with Lord Zed, yeah. bless his heart, and, yeah. um, and that was what they did was they brought in Lord Zed, but they got letters saying, we want that woman back because she's less scary. Right, yeah, kids were so, kind of scared of, 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 of Zed. He was, you know, of definitely, um, you know, sort of like the show was so campy, and then here's this, like, super you know, evil kind of guy. Yeah. And I think they needed they, to kind of like tone him down a little bit. They toned him down and brought me in. So it was more Lucy Ricky. Yeah. Right. You of know, course. Yeah. We got more like, and, and they brought in Carla and mm -hmm. she, and they, the story was that she was much more uh, like she took a youth potion. First thing right. I had a chance. I wore it once. I almost did it, but they came up with the, the uh, youth potion idea with a, another Filipina woman because Machiko Soga was actually Filipino. Right. Even though she's from Japan. Um, <laughs> Interesting. So anyway, yeah. so that's what happened was uh, I didn't get the part, which I was, thank you, God, I didn't want to wear that headdress. I would, oh. My neck would be still injured, I think. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so I, I, that's what happened. Uh, Carla took over and I did the voice, so. Right. Well, at least that was easier to match the mouth. <laughs> a much easier. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of to, uh, to leapfrog back to what your original question was, Steve. Yes, there there were two Zordons or two voices of Zordon. Right. Uh, because uh, I I left L.A. halfway through season one, and Robert Manahan took over as the voice of Zordon. He tried to match my vocal quality and did a really amazing job uh, at doing that. So. Uh, uh, he, he's the second voice, and I think one that most most of the fans are familiar with. But, right. Uh, well, you'll always be our fearless leader, sir. <laughs> That's just 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 from me to you. Man, from me to you. <laughs> uh, Gold are like. Um, well, I feel like David. I feel like David Fielding got robbed though in the movie because <laughs> you guys got to go and voice the movie, and then they just got some other actor to do uh, the Zordon voice. Yeah. You know, which I thought was like a little unfair. In my opinion. Yeah. Well, loyalty was not their number one. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, how can you say that? How can you say that? <laughs> talk, about our, talk, talk about our fearless leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is what it is. It is what it is. So uh, let me. So yeah, oh, yeah I was gonna. I was gonna jump in for a minute. He's been no, like jumping ahead. at the bits. I think. No, no. Go ahead. You got. You got. <laughs> no, you got stuff. Good. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. I don't have stuff. I. I'm gonna let you. You. You do the thing, man. It's your show. <laughs> I'm. I'm in heaven right now with you guys. So including Steve. So you know, this is this is a lifelong dream for me, and I'm living it with the uh, with the people here on the uh, on the chat room, which are you know uh, are really happy. Um, here's a question that's coming in from D23 Mon. What Disney villain would Goldar rather work with? Or Marvel supervillain and why? So I'm guessing that's for Kerrigan. Yeah. Kerrigan, yeah. Yeah, would you, you know, rephrase or ask me that again? Sure, yeah. What no, what Disney? I want to I want to I want to comment to that in a bit of a different manner, and it's tough. Um, and these are the, I get these kinds of questions sometimes on panels, and what the sometimes the fans. Um, again, I'm not out to burst the bubble, but the the they. they I'm, I'm an actor, and so, you know, that's almost like Goldar is me, I am Goldar. I get that, but I'm not familiar enough with all the other, so ask it again, and let me see if something jumps to mind that I can answer that in that manner. Sure, and, and Kerrigan, put you, there you go, keep your face in the thing, we're seeing only <laughs> half your face in the camera. Well, I, the three, <laughs> the cameras work? I no, no. 
I was, I wanted but you were just out of frame like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> so did I go out? Okay. Yeah, you're good now. You're good now. You're good. You're good. What what villain? What Marvel super villain would you work with, and why? Are you familiar with any of the Marvel super villains? Bro, would you throw some at me, please? How about I, how about enough, the, they? I'm, ask... enough, I'm enough familiar that if I hear the name, how am I vamping so far? I'll throw <laughs> you an answer. Well, they even they they ask Disney too. Are you familiar with any Disney villains? From the but past, again, throw, me, throw me some stuff. Um, Cruella, and I'll Cruella, Cruella Deville, Deville and Goldar together would and be Goldar, fun. Goldar, <laughs> yeah, or or even Thanos from the Marvel movies, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is a bad question for Karen. <laughs> I I'm, I'm, I'm so. That's okay. Sick. Yeah, don't worry about it. Deville, he would love to work. Thanos, with Thanos was yeah. I'd love to work with all of them or something. There you go. I love that. I love I that. Just, it, like, is it, it, Kerrigan's like, are they paying? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. Are they paying me? Yeah. Uh, do just, it. I don't care who it is. That's right. <laughs> Mister, I don't right. give a fuck. <laughs> That's oh my god. Oh, I oh, I'm so sorry for my lame answer, guys. I'm sorry. No, no, no good. We're good. It's all about the cheddar. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. oh, no, it's all good. So I'll, I'll ask them for myself now here. Um, how how well, and this, you know, you guys could answer one by one. And I asked this a lot to the uh, past Rangers. Um, how well were you equipped to realize that this show had taken off the way it did back in the 90s to like the popularity that arose overnight? Um, and we'll start with, with David with you and then we'll walk along the line here. Um, were you ready for the success and, and like the buildup of what this, this monster uh, basically took off with? I no, love that. Not, not at all. I mean, because uh, when, I, when I did the show, uh, uh, it, it, was, it was just the pilot. It hadn't been picked up yet. And so um, uh, we did that little bit and it was, it was great. It was a, a, a great introduction to, to Hollywood and the filmmaking process and all that sort of stuff. And then there was this, this long, almost year long, half, it was like eight months or something like that where they were in production, they were filming episodes and I would just go in like every six weeks to do voices and stuff. And I was still in LA when, when the show premiered uh, in August of 93, uh, like this coming Friday uh, on the 20th. Wow, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I saw the, uh, the show come on the air and that was wonderful, that was awesome. But I was, I was leaving LA, I, was, I wasn't a part of the show at that point, I was, I was leaving and stuff. So once I left LA, I just sort of forgot about it until the Christmas holidays when uh, it was the in-demand toy. You had to have a Power Ranger or, yes. or whatever. And so I thought, oh, well, th that's really cool. It, it kind of is very popular. And then I forgot about it for like years. I, I was off doing uh, video games and stuff like that. And it wasn't until Facebook came along when I started to get messages from strangers, weren't you the guy that was on the show? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I mean, is that still going on? <laughs> and that's when, that's when I was like, oh my gosh, this thing has blown up. It's taken off. It's so many different seasons. And that's when it hit me. I was like, oh man, I, I guess I should have stuck it out another six months or something. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it wasn't until much later that I, that I realized, you know, that wow, you realized like how much love there still was for it. And so right, right. Oh, that's good. Miss Rita, <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> I guess I, I'll, I'll just go back to watching the first uh, pilots with my family in New York, I was visiting home and my, I guess my son was about five then. And all the adults looked at me like, what is this? This, I'm, I'm glad you got a, you know, a paycheck. A check. Glad you got a check, yeah. <laughs> and you got a check, good luck with that. <laughs> I just love the yeah. I just love the bitterness. You know, there's so much bitterness after we no, leave the show. <laughs> no, I know it's great. I love it. I love it. I, believe me, I'm relating to you 100 percent right now. Anyway, and sorry, go, Barbara. None, none of the adults got it, including us. We didn't right. get it. We were just working. And uh, then when uh. I, I saw, but my son was glued to the screen. I mean, that yeah. was that's the market. That was the indicator. Yeah. And then you you go forward to the universal f show and th and they had uh, tra they stopped traffic for that the the and entire 101 was shut down and that's when i realized i was supposed to be backstage 
in the wings doing the voice for the live show. Right. And yeah. I couldn't get, I, I lived in Studio City. I mean, I was a stone's throw. Oh, literally from, five minutes away, yeah. Literally, literally three <laughs> from the main gate. And my, my pass, my, my, my drive on <clears throat> was at the main gate. And you know, the main gate is the main gate. We all went through the main gate. Yeah, nobody, right. nobody went through the, the, the gate. Well, the gate I wound up having to go to because I couldn't get to the main gate. That is how fucked up the traffic was. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my no, god. No, no. This is no no guys, this is no bullshit. And and I and you have to, you had to know basically the shortcuts of how to get literally I did a zigzag because I was freaking out. We're down to 20 minutes before this show is a go, and there's going to be no Goldar in the wings doing the lines. This is serious mess. Yeah, yeah, so for I sure. So I work my way back up against the mountain. There's a gate way... I don't even know if you fucking even know where it is, Steve. It's <laughs> oh, I way don't. fuck in the back, <laughs> and I know I can get on, and I know I can get there by, by zigzagging my way through the, the, the insane traffic. I mean... Right. Barham is stuck. Everything is stuck. So I get my ass back there inside of minutes. And this, now I can't even say this. It doesn't matter what the size of the man was. He was a very large guard. Mm -hmm. Stuck up in the mountain there where nobody comes. I come uh -oh. roaring. I said, I got a thing. They're doing the live show. The traffic, I got to get in. And well, I don't have a pass. I don't have a pass for you, man. I can't help you, man. I, I said, dude, I don't want to go down this road and nor do you <laughs> get oh on the God. phone because your job is going to be gone in five minutes. And that's not a threat. I'm begging you, wake up and smell the coffee yeah. right now. Get me on this lot because I, the clock's ticking. He looked at me a little flustered and got on the phone. And in one thirty eight, two seconds, go. And wow. I Lucky. Pass, I raced over and I literally was on in the wings about seven minutes before the show went. Oh my God. Holy moly. Wow. Nick, no, no, nobody... is, is my, mine was recorded. How come you did yours live? I don't know. I don't know, but I did. Mine was live. And I was, going... that was mouthing my words. But... Yeah, well, the problem is they knew you were difficult and they knew you didn't know what that game was. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't you. Don't you either. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I That's love amazing. It. <laughs> You know, not they knew true. I could, they, so not true. They, they knew I could ad lib if things got tricky or funky, and so they just wanted to get you on tape and call it a day. Oh, okay? that's yeah. right. Yeah. This is the one yeah. time they couldn't do with it with a, with a Kerrigan type. They needed actual yeah, no Kerrigan. Type. No, there was no. <laughs> but yeah. you were gonna get it by going. <laughs> Barbara, the guard like none of their plans ever worked out. They argued. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and just to just to put some perspective for the people that don't know about LA or you know everybody knows about LA traffic. But the 101 is hands down any time of the year is the busiest or any time of the day for that matter is the busiest um, freeway in the, entire, in the entire city of Los Angeles or the entire county of Los Angeles. And when the Power Rangers showed up that first year. Oh, my God. And, and shut down that freeway, which is like, you know, it's like cutting off an artery for somebody. Well, and then it backed it, and then it backed it, it, backed it up. And then it backed it up to 405. So, I mean, yeah. it shut down, down for hours. Right. Well, that was that was my introduction to what Power Rangers was because I saw it on the news in Texas. You know what I mean? Like, it was everywhere. <laughs> wow. The news was everywhere. Like, it was all over. And then, then you started hearing about the parents fighting over the toys at Christmas. Right. And I was like, man, maybe I should watch this show. Because, like, I was a martial arts teacher and I was teaching kids. And they were talking about Power Rangers like crazy. I'm like, maybe I should watch this show, you know? And so I started watching it and I kind of got into it. And I was like, yeah. So I was already familiar with the show before before my audition because of that. Because I had heard about what happened on the 101 freeway. And I, and this is, you know, like when I was still living in, in, in the Dallas area. So uh, it was, yeah, it was it was a mess. Now, um, now Barbara, I got, I, I got more yeah. questions that are coming in for you like, like hot, man. So... Uh, one of them, one of them Barbara's is on fire tonight. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys have more questions for for uh, David or Kerrigan, please uh, ask it. I'll, I'm throwing it as, as many as possible towards them. This is we're trying to do as interactive this show as possible. Well, they're 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 pissed off that I screwed up. The first <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, Barbara, they want to know. They want to know. A really quickly, you can answer this super quick. How was your throat after uh, voicing Rita? Um, I'm pretty sure that was pretty insane. Oh, fine. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, is you, did you lose your voice a lot during any of the recordings? Oh, look, I love she's got the mask. Rita's got the mask. I'm okay doing the voice. I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's um, still got it. She's she still, still got it, ladies it. and gentlemen. She, she still, still has it. it. Just in there, a little water and a diaphragmatic breathing. And you got her. She's not leaving. No, I right. love it. Oh, my God. So, I can't believe so, that. So in those long recording sessions, though, it didn't it didn't take its toll, though, at the end of the day kind of thing. Or was I it like say, something? This is where Kerrigan and I, I don't know, we're, we're going to argue about this one. <laughs> no, no. Let's, no, we won't. Well, let's hear it. There was a recording session for the Universal show that lasted eight hours. God, Holy that? crap. And there was that. I saw your bluff, buddy. Anyway. <laughs> And that's a separate Maybe that's separate. you do some extra stuff as Goldar. But um, we did that, and, and I lost my voice because it was not. Well, that woman was clueless. She was a, if you recall, she was a choreographer, and she had no business directing what you, you, she was out of her league completely. And you're right, that was a horror show. I right. forgot about that. But that that's, but I think yeah. that was anyway, different. Anyway, I lost I think, my voice on yeah. the Universal recording because it was eight hours, not two hours. Wow. But I, I usually did only two hours at a time because Rita's stuff was in the beginning of the show and the right. end of the show and maybe a little in the be in the middle. And she basically said the same thing. Make my monster grow. Yeah. Oh, I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> so when when they could do like four ep four episodes in a two hour session. Right. Get done yeah. with me. Yeah, that's yeah. That's... And I was doing Orbis and Sprocket. Oh yeah, you oh, were all you were wow. a bunch of them, yeah. You did Sprocket too? Well, I had yeah. no I, I why did I just I was like leave me? And Orbis only because I uh they did us for to say who we were. So I was number seven and I then I got cast because they didn't know who they were casting. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Um another really quick thing I want to know is uh how does it feel to be part of the Lady and the Tramps legacy when your voice uh Darling in the sequel. Oh, did we lose you? Oh no, okay, good. Well, she's here. Whose legacy? Uh, lady in the Lady the in lady the Tramp, in, the sequel? Yeah, Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> when you voiced Darling in the sequel. When I did uh, Peggy Peggy Lee. That I was very proud of that. Uh it was a very small part, but um I got <laughs> that from uh, being able to mimic Peggy Lee and do my little lady. <laughs> I just, you know, I grew up with my parents, you know, music and stuff. Peggy Lee, no, 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 you know. So I, as a mimic, I mimicked her and got booked. Nice. I was very proud of her. Yeah, this is like this is so cool. I mean, this is what I love about the fans. They know more uh. about us than we know about ourselves. It's pretty crazy. Like, um, <laughs> like when, it, like for, with David, right? When people were reaching out to you on MySpace or whatever and saying, "Hey, weren't you the guy from from Power Power Rangers?" And it's like you didn't even remember that you. You were like, "Yeah, what was that? Like a hundred years ago." Exactly. Yeah. Now, David. Yeah, uh, we didn't go to conventions in the beginning. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right? None of us did. None of us did. Yeah. We weren't even allowed to. We weren't even allowed to make appearances. Yeah, the, remember that's that the thing. I guess when 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 I was doing the show, uh, this was ninety two, right, going mm -hmm. into ninety three, and uh, the way I looked at it was that it was like another Saturday morning kids TV show, the same kind of show that I grew up with, that was on the air for like one season or two seasons, and then it would be replaced by something else. So uh, uh, at the time, I thought, well, this is a great little, nice little thing, you know, that you could sort of. Uh, you know, have a nice little anecdote about it. it's. It's great. Never expected that it would last for thirty years or or whatever. Right. And yeah. at the time, there were no pop culture conventions. Uh, I think there were Star Trek and sci fi conventions. There were Star was, Trek conventions and, and Star Wars conventions that were starting to do, right. but there wasn't any anything there was else. No, there was there was boat shows. Remember the boat shows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the pop culture <laughs> explosion hadn't happened yet. That didn't happen until the early mid two thousands or something. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it took it took a while for for them to get there. Twenty ten was the big one for me. That's right. Where... Well, the, the very first Power Morphicon was two thousand seven, and I think all of it. Yeah, and I think that all of it was like it, it all coincided with the advent of, of of social media because back then it was like Facebook came out in like two thousand six or something like that. And then all of these other, wow. you know, and it was just another way for people to start connecting. So all of these forums started popping up. And people were who could express their love for Power Rangers now had a a, a, a a medium to do so, you know. Or so I think that was part of it. 
And and then at the same time, you know, everything was starting to cycle back around again. And so, you know, and, and all these people who were kids in the 90s are now starting to grow yes. up. Now they've got money. They want to start going out and like and, and spending money on collectibles. And, you know, and then these little conventions that people used to do, like little trade show conventions just started blowing up. I mean, all of them started as like in little ballrooms. And then, you know, I mean, I remember doing Florida. It was at Florida. At that time, it was called Anime Supercon. And that was in 2008, maybe, in 2008. And it was inside the um, ballroom of, like, some little Hilton hotel or something like that. And then, like, and now it's the, one of the biggest com- comic conventions in Florida. Like, 75,000 people come every single year. You know, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, it just keeps growing exponentially, which, you know, I think is great and Sadly, uh, you know, unfortunate that it's like, yeah, right for the time well, being, yeah. It was be always bad. a good way to reconnect with all of you guys too, you know, yeah. with Kerrigan, yeah. man. Kerrigan <laughs> and I would have so much fun. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Kerrigan yeah. and I need to go back to McGuire's Pub. That's where we live. Oh <laughs> man! You know, it's funny. You know, we're going back and going back and going back. And, and Steve, you you say something about 2006 and this that, and I'm sitting here realizing. That when Barbara and I were doing voiceover, we were wandering around. And David, you weren't doing any of it at the time, but you were doing whatever experiences you were doing in, I assume, Dallas. <clears throat> um, we had no pagers, man. We didn't even have pagers, let alone cell phones. I mean, mm. you know that my demo, Steve, my, my voiceover demo, which I still have, my original demo, my commercial and promo demo is actually on a quarter inch reel. Wow. Your reel. They refer to it as your promo reel. I have the original reel. And at the VoiceCaster, they used to have the cases of all the different voiceover people. I think they still do. I I think it was still there. Thank God. Mine was a a cassette. uh, cassette. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you were younger. You're younger. (laughs) But I mean, you know, they really did put the reel on a TAC and listened to, well, ideally they listened to your reel. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, the agent would actually send over the reel. Right. I, yeah. I, you know, so um, yeah. And I courier services touch- back then were incredible. <laughs> I just was in touch with somebody the other day. I haven't gotten gotten back to him and asked, do you have the equipment to transfer my first promo reel onto um, a DVD? He said, I do. Yes, I do. But I cannot take responsibility if the tape breaks. Right. I, said, I don't I think use- you want a DVD. I think you want yeah. a, a, <laughs> he's, a like, he's, like, he's still going 20 years back. He's like, I yeah, need a DVD. <laughs> I want streaming. You need a yeah, digital stream- file on your computer. That's what you need. Yeah, give him a <laughs> license license zero, zero, he's All like, right, can you right, take my right, reel? I'm kidding myself right now. Right, I don't want a DVD. They're just right. going to... Filter you down into ones and zeros. Right? Can you turn? Yeah. Can, you, can you turn my smoke signals into <laughs> into a into a reel, please? Oh, you little shit! Okay. <laughs> Lady, ladies and gentlemen, oh, oh, we're I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're here I'm on the show right soul. now. To anyone anyone new who just uh, you know, happened to get into the chat. Called, that's why. That's why he hasn't called me back because he, he says this, the poor son of a bitch wants me to turn his reel. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, you know, going back to my theme of how, and this is this is this is this is a shout out to Kerrigan right here. When I, you know how I am, Alex, I, I'm a bigger fan of the villains. You know, all I, I the mean, time. We talk about this all the time on the podcast. How you know, like Lord Zed is one of my favorite characters. You know, and I, you know, I, I just, I'm always like, kind of like secretly sort of rooting for the bad guy a little bit because they just get to be so much more interesting. You know, and I think Kerrigan has like one of the best lines in the movie. And uh, it's when they're standing on top of that tower in Sydney, like when you guys had, and, and Goldar's there, Ivan Ivan Ooze is there, and he, and, and uh, here comes the new Zord for the Pink Ranger, oh. and it's flying in, and uh, and 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 Ivan Ooze says, "Oh, here comes that cute little Pink Ranger," and then and then Kara goes, oh, "You think she's cute too, huh?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you think she's cute too?" <laughs> no, no, not really. No, no, no. Yeah. No, it is a great line, and it goes something like this. Oh, so you think she's you too, huh? Oh, my God. He's doing God. it. He's doing the voice. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. 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 Oh
my god love it love it love it love it yeah we should we should we should do a little bit of that we should hear rita's been uh, uh sorry barbara's been doing her voice the whole time and kerrigan just did his we need to hear the rangers yeah so yeah, david or david or immediately <laughs> do that again do it again i was talking over you sorry rangers Teleport to the command center immediately. <laughs> this is incredible. It this is, is insane. Look, look, right now, the the the, the, the nine year old in this in this guy right now is going nuts right now. <laughs> you know, when, the, when the 2017 movie came out and Elizabeth Banks was uh, Rita, uh, I really missed the the Goldar because that that gold monstrosity they had was was okay, but I really I wanted, don't know what it was. I don't yeah, know. I, I wanted my winged. <laughs> Goldar and I yeah. wanted, to be, I wanted to be here Me too. I, I wanted that so Me bad. too. And yeah, I, I mean... wanted fucking check. <laughs> 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 you gotta love it. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, like, I, I see. I, I mean, you, you, here's the thing about that movie, and maybe you guys will agree with me. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't memorable to me. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it, it, if if anyone was a formal a former fan of Power Rangers, then all they're gonna do is be comparing that movie. And when anything is not the same, it's you know. It, we need a good. We was need a was there good, even a good. voice for Goldar in that movie? No, no, no. no. Yeah, he didn't even have a voice. No. See, no, like it was that's, that's so iconic. You know what I mean? I, it's I, like, I so think frustrating. It of, I think it was a question of pace, really, because the movie was such a slow burn. Uh, I think they got the heart of what the show was about and and the teamwork aspect and stuff, but they took a really long time to get there. Yeah, and, I'll agree uh, with you on that. The show was so fast paced and uh, everything was happening right away that, you know, I in the movie, I would have loved to have seen them fight the putties outside of the armor like they did on the show and, you know, bond that way as a team. Yeah. Uh, but it took them too long to morph. And the the snippet of the theme was only in there for a moment. And then they had that uh, stupid gold monster, uh, which just mm -hmm. really didn't fit well. Mel melted you know, in all fairness. Yeah. I think you're being very, very kind. I mean, I finally got around to watching. I thought it was ghastly. I thought the script was a piece of dog shit. I thought the director was horrific. And I think the acting was bad. And boy, if that's not a triple threat, and rarely, <laughs> rarely is there a triple threat in Hollywood to that degree. And I mean, I, you know, I no, no, in all, in all fairness, usually, usually, you don't go, you, you, the acting is usually pretty solid regardless and uh, but when you've got all three that are just deadly it was deadly i yeah right. good i don't movie. agree a hundred percent i thought elizabeth banks did her best to try and f create a new character and uh that's a tough one she wanted she to would, do a new character she, she would be the dissenter and you are absolutely correct and i'll back off on her she's a She's a damn good actress. Damn good actress. Yeah. She's, She's very good. good. She's very good. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as the kids and and the way they unfolded, yeah, it took a, a a little bit longer than it should. But I think they had the hope that they'd have these sequels and they would develop on it to was that. A bad right. Fucking script. <laughs> right. Period. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I knew there had to be a some way for a group that diverse to get thrown together, and the Breakfast Club thing they did with the detention and all that—that yeah. seemed—that seemed to be an okay way for these people who probably normally wouldn't have like interacted with one another at that school, you know, to come together. So I, 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 mean, I felt like that part was pretty good, and and, and I'll agree, I'll agree with Fielding on the fact that. You know the, the whole the whole overall theme of the of, of Power Rangers is that you know we need to learn how to work together as a team despite our differences, despite our backgrounds, so on and so forth. And that part I feel like they got right. But yeah, you're right. It was slow. Pace, pace. It was slow. The pace. It was and slow. It was like, yeah. Come on. In, in the first movie, we're we're jumping out of airplanes. Then we're rollerblading backwards downstairs. We're skydiving. We're you know we're we you know then we get into a big giant fight. And then then you know our powers disappear. We got to, we're we're going to another planet. We're bouncing around all over the place. And you know it's nonstop. You know and they cram it into an hour and a half. But this is like a long teenage angst. Two two hours long. Movie, they try you know? they they try to like Michael Bay it like with freaking Transformers. They but, they build yeah. it. They build too much anticipation to the morphing sequence that it that it kind of, by the time that they did it you were like okay yeah, what what now the end the, 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 the ending was like Steve, 20 I'm, minutes I'm, yeah i'm gonna sorry. pay you a compliment to uh, i'm sorry but you guys were better you were better actors um aside from elizabeth but your you kids were much, well, again you had you had you had the background 
and you knew you knew who you were and you knew your characters. These well, kids lost and they didn't have good direction period well i i I appreciate that one one thing that that was on our side it wasn't necessarily the acting um it was just that brian spicer the director did 30 takes of everything so he had a lot of choices to pick the best one and he cut it all together and made it look pretty good (laughs) so i'll just say that but yeah yeah you don't you don't want you don't want to know the scene that went on between brian and kerrigan on the sound stage we're going to leave that at bay oh okay (laughs) all right maybe maybe we'll talk about that one later Uh, maybe maybe on the other side yeah right. yeah 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 so by the way anybody who's just joining us now uh we want to say thank you to everyone who's uh subbing who's giving us bits who's uh subscribing to the channel like i mentioned before and following the the channel in the chat yeah so i want to thank all of you all your questions are amazing everything you know i see that you guys are having an incredible time they're saying that an hour is not enough for the kind of conversations that you guys are bringing on to us right now um i also want to let you guys know yeah, there will be a part two. I would you guys. I would love that. Yeah, I as, mean, as you guys are watching it to our left, that's David Fielding. That is uh, Zordon. Right above us is uh, Rita Repulsa, Barbara, and all the way to our right is you guys probably already know because he's taking over the show, Mr. Kerrigan here, <laughs> Goldar. I love so, it. I love um, it. You guys, you guys are seeing. Why wouldn't I? Why yeah, yeah. I? You guys are seeing um, probably the the very first three people to really like. Um, show their faces on 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 power rangers because it started off with rita right and and even though you don't see them you they voiced them so you guys would recognize them yeah yeah and and you guys were the the first people to work on it because i don't even think they had finished the casting of like who they wanted to even have on the show as the teenagers at that point probably Right, they well, probably started coming. You question. guys were dubbing the, the Japanese footage probably at that point because you're creating a pilot, and even the original pilot didn't even have the same original six people. It had, I mean, it had, it had a couple, at least a couple of them were different. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the, uh, the special effects for Zordon where he looked like a big green blob of jello. That was. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know what? Um, I, I was when we. Uh, when we did the kind of the audition pilot, if you will, it wasn't really a, 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 the pilot. It wasn't the pilot. Uh, when we first voiced these characters, I think, Barbara, you were a part of this. I can't remember your being in that room. But Michael Sorich, who was Squat, and, 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 and uh, uh, Finster and, and, and Mallow, who did uh, the, the Nebishi one. Um, and, and, Axel. and then, yeah, Axelrod. And then, um, uh, what's his name? says uh kerrigan do the gold guy just throw some you know some nasty voice at him i don't think he's got much of a part i said okay and and you know i think i had one line one growl or one something in a <laughs> teaser it was it virtually it was a teaser it wasn't the pilot and right um, right and i you know we walked away and we all rolled our eyes and said well you know <laughs> they actually paid us for that piece of shit okay uh that's never going to be the light of day and of course six weeks later um uh tony oliver who was who was one of the producers who who had been um he was you know rick baker in robotech so he was yeah. one of our, and then he yeah. went to the other went, went to the dark side and uh and and he said hey it's going this thing's going uh, and we all said, wow, really? So still Goldar had a very small role for the first, I think, 16 episodes until Tony called me and said, we made a mistake. Goldar's got a huge role and you better figure out what to do with that voice. Wow. So what that's are you talking crazy. About? And that's why I hear the question. And I know out there fans right now are realizing or I've been asked, it, you know, for years was that your voice or why did the voice change or what happened? And what happened was, you know, I was not dedicating or committing to a really good solid voice that I could sustain in the beginning. I was just throwing, you know, just throwing spaghetti right. on the ball. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you, uh. Right. <clears throat> and it was scratchy and it was pinched. And um, Tony said, you got to figure out how to sustain it because you're going to be recording, you know, for many, many lines here. And that's when we went into parts uh, one through five or, or part one and two. Green is the something of evil or whatever that was. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Three parts, I think, part three part. So five, I went down and had a little basement. Part. What's yeah, that? There you go. Five. Yeah, right. It was five right. Part. You know the five part of the Green Ranger saga. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, because Zordon was missing for four of them. So yeah, I, I, I... <laughs> we that, that Zordon was the Green Ranger. Everybody might have thought <laughs> he escaped out of the hyper chamber. I, I learned how to do. I figured out how to do. You know how to roll roll this voice over my vocal cords so that I can make it work. And <laughs> um, and and that and that in the voice did change. I mean, it changed dra fairly drastically. And so, you know, yeah, the first 16 episodes were, you know, they were kind of right. not committed. And then, right. then I got into that new voice and Tony said, whatever you're doing, it's great. And they right. like it. Make sure we can understand you. And I said, OK, I get it. So, <clears throat> well, it was, so probably we pretty, it was probably pretty good to have an advocate, you know, somebody who was technically one of you guys on that other side of the glass. You know, oh, he, was he, was, awesome. he was great. I, mean, yeah. is, I, I had to side, use a. I, they had to, uh, I was breaking the microphones. So I had to use a special mic. Tony, Tony told me, we got to find a different mic for you because your voice is uh, wow. dest uh, destroying our microphones. So, yeah. oh, wow. Well, oh, you're the only person tribute. I've ever known that can destroy a diaphragm in a fucking professional <laughs> microphone. That's fucked up. I love it. Well, that's just a testament to how, like, you know, <laughs> incredible the character of Rita Repulsa was. So, um, you know, hey, uh, Alex, I want to ask a question. So um, I know you have some other questions right now, but I'm going to jump in because I think it would be a disgrace if we <laughs> didn't, like, just give a nod and a shout out to Robert Axelrod. Yes. And all of you guys worked with him so for so long. And um, maybe if I, I mean, you know, because I, I, I didn't really get to know Robert Axelrod until we started doing the conventions together. And, you know, for the most part, quite, quite of you, I mean, I didn't really get to know the real you guys until we started doing these conventions together. And uh, maybe you guys could just tell us some, some, some stories about Robert because, um, you know, I mean, just what a sweet man he was, you know, like just this little unassuming guy. You would never think that he was Lord Zed, you know what I mean? Like when, when you look at him and. And um, I just kind of want to get your take on on him as a human and, and just like a, what, what he was to work with and stuff, if we could, you know, take a little moment for, for the man himself. Well, I'll start. Uh, sure. Robert was, um, I knew, Robert and I were the same age and went to Queens College at the same time. Oh, wow. Really? We didn't know that. Wow. We found out that uh, just socializing somewhere that... You went to, I was there then, what? <laughs> so, um, and he was also into uh, the, uh, I was into S, he was into Scientology. We, we were both into the self-help, right. exploration stuff. So we shared a lot of that besides being New Yorkers right. and that sensibility. We were not social friends, except at parties and things. But right. we had a, uh, we definitely had a sister and brother connection, and we were put together as comic personalities together. The New York energy, I guess, worked. Yeah. Um, Robert had a dark, uh, dark side or or a, a troubled side. Let's just say that he he had he suffered from drug abuse and alcohol abuse, and he he pulled it together a little late in life. And I think that's why he left us so soon because he right. he did do a lot of damage to his, his body. Yeah. And um, he was a love, and he was a lot of trouble. He had a he was yeah. a, he was a, he didn't have, he, you know nobody's perfect. Of course. And he, he did hit his stride later, and when he but he was a dedicated actor. I mean, the guy was talented and versatile. And that was what his love was. He loved the theater. He loved, he was never going to end be, not be an actor. I mean, right. that was, his life was about that. Yeah. And his support was about that. And when we had shared signings, he said, hey, I, hey, Barbara, I got money for you. <laughs> you know? Wow. I and, love uh, it. Yeah. That's and so I, I, I saw him in the hospital at the end. And yeah. he always felt like he, it was going to, we all said he's the ever ready batteries. He's gonna keep going. And, yeah, right. And when he didn't, it was like, no, I don't, right. I don't buy. It. But he, and it's better that he left because what had happened to him by the end was was cruel. I mean, yeah. it was a hard, hard end. So yeah. that's. So I, wow. I miss him. I can't believe he's gone, but he's not. He's not. Yeah. Gone. 
Right. Well, you know, luckily, you know, it, it, he's forever going to be a part of pop culture like all of us at this point. And, you know, and I, I am grateful for that. But I'm grateful that I got to know him because, you know, he, he, to me, he was just he was just the sweetest guy, you know. So I, I thought that was cool. So uh, how about for, for you, for you, either one of you guys can jump in before I start getting misty over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me, I mean, uh, uh, he was cast after I had already left. Right, uh, right. So, but I mean, we certainly saw him on the convention circuit all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to know him on the circuit, and he was always super nice. He, you know, we would always say hi to one another, and uh, I think we sat on a couple of Q and A panels together, and uh, always just just a super guy and such yeah. a distinct uh, voice, and and yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's they're not going to be able to get a Robert Axelrod type, you know what I mean? <laughs> he should have done Winnie the Pooh. No offense to Jim Jim Cummings, but he had the, he had that Sterling Holloway voice. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to see that that, that like as you put it, the versatility, you know. So uh, how about but you did a lot of stuff with them too as as well, yeah, Kerrigan. Well, yeah, yeah, we we did a lot of lot of work together, and and I I, I would have to concur with Barbara. Um, respectful of everything she said he 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 had a dark side there's no two ways about it and he could get crusty as a motherfucker mm -hmm. um and you know uh but he had a heart of gold yeah. and um he and i had um not again we didn't socialize but we always had good times on sessions right uh, sometimes he would be late and it would make me irate <laughs> and, you know and but we we acknowledged that too um but he and i had a uh a professional relationship i i would say so right. for the most part and i respected his talent and 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 he mine and then we wound up at a gig together, just the two of us. Uh, okay. In Danville. Like Dan in Denver? Danville. Danville, Illinois, as I oh, recall. Okay. In the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I, I can't, I don't, it's all a little vague, but we were in the middle of a nowhere. We were <laughs> in a cow pasture. And of course, it, it had been advertised as, you know, a big event. And it wasn't. Although mm -hmm. we did fine. We did, we did well, and it was fairly well attended and uh i think it was the closest we ever got in our whole period of knowing each other just over that it was only a two-day event as i recall a saturday sunday yeah he, you know he was he was he was already on his way to being you know he got sicker and sicker and sicker and you know he yeah. was bent over i mean you know that had to hurt yeah um physically <clears throat> And um, I don't know, we, you know, we came back from the gig and I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go take a jacuzzi. And he said, I'll join you. And I can't explain it. I can see it like it was yesterday. We sat there in the jacuzzi together and we just talked and talked and philosophized and talked about everything there was to talk about before dinner and then had dinner and kept talking and talked yeah. about alcohol and talked about life <laughs> and talked about relationships and it was really a an endearing it made my trip it right. was the closest i ever got to robert and uh wow. yeah he was uh he was um he was an interesting dude <laughs> that he was yeah smart with a dry mm -hmm. humor i mean you know david you talked about being on a panel with him and as we, as we all were but you know i love when he could just hang his head sitting over there on the side <clears throat> and you could see him just completely just had it dialed in. He timed it, and he knew, and he delivered the punchline just right. <laughs> and you know, it was like, oh my god, that was beautiful. You know, yeah, he was, was sleeping be like a minute before. Oh, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, and he even knew how to do that. He knew how to sleep and knew when to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, get out, get out. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, wow. Mark of a great voice actor, right? You know your cue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I miss wow. him though. I mean, it is weird uh, after he was gone and then doing the, you know, kind of the memorial from we were in Grand Rapids and the other. Yeah. But I don't know, uh, Steve, if you were in Grand Rapids or down at Ranger Stop, but we did that whole thing. And it was just very strange that he was really that brought home to me that he is not here with yeah. us. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. sometimes sometimes when you when you when you don't see a person for a while and you don't hang out with them, then sometimes you kind of forget if they're not part of your daily life, you know. And then it's like it kind of hits you a little bit more. And you're like, oh damn, you know. Uh, so I, I I can definitely respect that. Um, but yeah, what a what a great guy, and uh, you know, yeah, he's definitely missed by uh, all of us and all the fans for sure. But um, as, like I said, I mean, he's gonna live on forever, so that's for really sure. cool too. So anyway, I, thank you guys for sharing that with me. I don't know, I I just felt like you know, I would be remiss if I did not talk about him a little bit, you know, with these with you three icons here and who worked with them so much, you know, because um, you guys, you know, on I, even though like a lot of times it was in the fishbowl, but you guys had lots of scenes together and stuff, and you kind of put that together, so. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, sorry. I, okay, go ahead. Totally. Ask no, no, no. So uh, we, we we got about a minute left. So really quickly, um, Barbara, before we get out of here, did you know that there's a brand new 25th anniversary Lord Zed and uh, Rita Repulsa two pack I, that just came out? So I you, think so. Yeah. Yeah. So you're oh, still nice. you're still being out there and mortalized. <laughs> I know, uh, David. They just released one with you and Alpha and yeah, Kerrigan. Yeah. They just released one another one of yours, but without wings this time. So I don't know. They yeah. just want to make money, I yeah, guess, I'll at this point. Okay, I gotta going... make some phone calls. Right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Hasbro's going crazy right now. I will. I will say this about Hasbro. You know, they took over the franchise, and you know what? They're not messing around. They're getting the. They're getting the, their versions of stuff out there. They're keeping it relevant. They're gonna make mo new movies again. I mean, just as soon as they get the chance to be able to actually film them. So you know um i'm glad i'm glad about that you know i think i think there's still a, a waiting in the wings no pun a really <laughs> kick ass origin movie yeah no they're gonna they're, i think hasbro's gonna redo that they're, they're, they're gonna scrap the whole idea of yep. that other movie they're gonna hire yeah. all new people they're gonna tell a whole new origin story in a different way and they're gonna be able to set it up properly for sagas you know so i think i think they're gonna do it right i mean you know you don't drop a billion dollars in, in into a franchise it's a and then not do anything with it you know what i mean no and i yeah. and i send emails daily to hasbro reminding them that goldar never died <laughs> yep. i was never seen on camera i never went to sand dust okay so nice. we gotta, we're all clear on that <laughs> right <laughs> Well, this went this went way too fast. I know there was so many other things that we wanted to unpack, you know, and uh, we just didn't even get to them. This has been so much fun. Um, I, I I think we need to do this again. We need to have a part two. Part so, two. Two. Um, I would be honored, of course, if you guys could all come back again. Um, and uh, every, uh, right, Alex, we're out of oh, time. Aren't we? Yeah, we're we're out of time right now. I, obviously, um, we I want to thank Sorry. you guys for for coming on here. It's my childhood that I'm living through through uh, Steve's <laughs> contacts. Damn it! So yeah. uh, I'm always texting him. Hey, can we yeah. just happen to get this person on real well, quick? Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, that's the thing too. It's like, well, this is the reason we, we made the show an hour because you know I'm essentially reaching out for favors to all my friends here, and I'm like, hey, would you be on my podcast? And you know, I don't want to take up their whole night. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, if I ever feel like the vibe is good, I, w I would love to keep going, you know, but uh, maybe but, but I, I, you know, I know everybody's got their lives and stuff. So um, so uh, I guess uh, we have to cut it short here for now. But guys, thank you. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Thanks and uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, real quickly, how can 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 everybody um, just like tell how, how people that can, aren't following you yet, how they can follow you, Instagram facebook all that stuff um i know uh barbara you also do your voicemail shout outs for fans right where you'll give them the rita voice um can you tell them your email yeah, huh? i do whatever their favorite voices of mine that i do but they can email me at bdgoodson16 at gmail.com and then uh it's 40 dollars for a shout out i do three. Oh wow and you get three. Oh, that's even better three they're not that long, but they right. are shout outs, right. personalized. And then uh, it has to be PayPal. I'm doing right. it. Right. Okay. So, so that just email me, and then it'll be an MP3, and then you can use it for whatever you wow. want. Wow, that's nice. phenomenal. This is great, guys. By the way, because you can get these as like you could you could essentially download that MP3 file and then make it your ringtone. Make you know? it your ringtone. I hate the Power Rangers. You know what I mean? And then every time, because everyone's got the beep, 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 you know, as that annoying ringtone. How about a how about a shout out for Rita, huh? Like a or Rita a one, you know? Call. A wake up call. Wake up, bitches! <laughs> that would be amazing. Hey, yeah, so yeah and she, and I would imagine you'll pretty much you'll say whatever they want, right? You know, whatever you want them to. Yeah. Not too See, true. I think that's genius. I think that's genius. 
So uh, okay, See, Barbara, great. I want to talk to you about how you're how you're monitoring exactly what you're saying and all of that. Uh, although I appreciate what you're doing, I want to know exactly, you know, how are you deciding your length and all all of all of the rest of that. Right. Can say well, it's way. it's it's a it's a like a, a answering machine thing, so it's not that long. It's about right. uh, thirty okay. seconds is the max. Right. So you're like, this is Rita. You've reached Jack. He's not here right now. But leave a message, okay. my pretty. <laughs> Right. You know I love drill. it. I love. Yeah. Good. Got it. Got it. Steve, you can stand in for me if you'd like, and I'll pay you twenty. <laughs> maybe, maybe, may, hey, may, hey, uh, Kerrigan. Maybe Ford will hire us again to do the YouTube commercials. Man, that was fun. Oh yeah. How about yeah. that? Out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was asked super that. out of the blue. Yeah. That I don't was know cool. What that was about. I didn't hey, get um, I can be reached at Goldar and me at Gmail, and uh, and that's uh, the uh, the. Uh, just goldar and me at gmail.com and uh is it and goldar and me as in like and, or, and, or the goldar ampersand and me, goldar and, and me okay got it okay me. yeah at gmail.com and write uh write whatever you'd like and we'll uh we'll just play it by ear phenomenal okay and mr fielding please sir tell us yeah, all your you socials can uh find me on twitter at david j fielding you can find me on instagram at dj fielding underscore zordon uh, I'm also on Cameo, which is another uh, voice request kind of thing where you do a little short little video shout out. Uh, you can find me there. And uh, I have my Zordon Facebook page. So you can Yay. find me there. Yay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alex, fo Alex follows in. that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, mine are all the same. I do Cameo as well. And then I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Steve Cardenas PR guy. So, um, so on behalf of myself, our co-host, Mr. Alex Cardoza, uh, the entire Ranger villain slash good guy crew here. Um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you for joining us in the Twitch universe. Uh, everybody stay safe out there and may the power protect you. That's right. Stay safe. Wear your masks. <laughs>